All right, so on to the demo. What I'm going to demo for you today is migration tools and migration in general. And I think the best way to do so is to simply show you how to get to the migration tools without having to remember links. If you go to um, a, a browser, just type WebSphere application migration. And one of the items that you're going to get back a hit on is, is this migration planning for WebSphere application server. I recommend you that you, you just remember this place, um, bookmark this particular page. Now you know how to search it. It contains everything that you need to know about migration from planning, from um, whatever assistance that we offer on it, on the reasons to migrate, V9, the latest release, 855, being ZOS, and so on and so forth with a lot of decks and information on it. What I'm going to cover today with you is the migration tools. If I click on the tools, you'll see there is the migration strategy. Um, and this is the one that you use if you want to decide what to migrate to. As you know, there are multiple options, as we explained earlier, whether it's going to be Liberty versus traditional web sphere. Uh, and, and there is the Docker, there is um, uh, build packs with Cloud Foundry on um, Bluemix. Uh, these are the things that you need to kind of decide which direction you want to go to. And this will help you. It will ask you questions. And based on the answers, it will take you to the next box and it will help you make that decision. Click on any of these items and it's going to give you more details about it. So moving on to the next section and within the next section here, the, the uh, migration discovery tool. Um, this is the tool that if you look at it, it's basically helps you uh, make a decision uh, or, or understand what you're up against from a migration perspective, the cost of doing that migration. And that's what I'm going to walk you through right now very quickly. If I look at this tool, it's going to ask you a couple of questions like your name. And I'm just going to say Solomon, Solomon Company. Um, let's see, just migration, any description that you want to do. Where are you coming from? I'm coming from traditional. It could be non-IBM app servers as well. Where are you going to, whether traditional or Liberty or cloud? Um, I'm just going to say going back to traditional and um, just migration. It asks you if you need some help, go to the next step. This one try to ask you some questions about the complexity of the environments that you have. Um, then I'll let you read it to understand what it is when you actually input that data. It's kind of self-explanatory. And again, I'm just putting a couple of pieces of data here just to illustrate um, the tool itself. So moving down and I go next. It asks me whether I want to enter some historical data from IBM that it will enter on my behalf for the kind of functional and non-functional testing. Um, I'm just going to take the data from IBM on that. It gives you a summary of what you have. And then to look at the estimate, it tells you what it takes you 65 person days to do the migration. If you continue to go on, it will give you some more details about the assumptions, the scope that's being made, um, and, and much, much more information. It will even offer you some help, shows you what's available to you for free versus the items that are available as part of our services. Very useful tool. So with that, I'm going to go down. This is the application migration, the product migration tools. Um, everybody very much familiar with it. If not, you need to kind of examine them. The one I want to look into is the application migration. There is multiple set of migration tools that we offer that every single developer and every single person who's doing the migration should pay close attention to because it's going to help you tremendously. Um, some of these are standalone that you run from a command line. Others are part of the Eclipse, an Eclipse plugin which run on Eclipse or RAD. Um, so I'm just going to take one. I've already installed my Eclipse plugin here. If I go to Run, Analysis, and within the analysis, I could just simply create a new entry here, and I'm just going to call it Migration. And um, I'm going to select my entire workspace from analysis perspective, the rules. I'll go down, and there are multiple options in here, whether you come in, that application coming from non-IBM to IBM, or um, whether you're doing a cloud migration. In this case, I'm going to demo the V2V migration for WebSphere. As soon as I hit set, it's going to open another window for me. And that new window will kind of give me, ask me, where you're coming from? Well, OK, I'm coming from WebSphere, let's say, um, 7 or 6.1. Um, and I'm going to Liberty or to traditional WebSphere 8.5.5 or 9. Um, let's say I'm going to pick Liberty just to illustrate a couple of points. I even ask you about the target cloud environment, if you have any. You could say none, that means I'm staying on-prem. Or you can decide whether it's going to be a Bluemix to run Cloud Foundry, 
or it's going to be Docker containers, or it's going to be third-party um, platform as a service, whether it's OpenShift Enterprise or um, other Cloud Foundry providers. Or, of course, WebSphere on Bluemix, which is, as you know now, we have the ability to um, configure our provision WebSphere application servers on Bluemix, whether it's ND or single, single, single server. Um, so just, just go on from this. I'm just going to pick Bluemix, and I'm going to say OK. I'm going to um, apply the rule. And then I'm gonna go ahead and, and basically do the analysis. And, and I'm gonna just select a few of these in here to do the analysis on. And as you can see in here, as soon as I do this and do the, anal the analysis, um, it will just take a couple of seconds for it to finish and complete. I mean, here's 70% done. Uh, it's actually very, very quickly, and it's very impressive the time it takes for you to go through and, and do the migration. So it's done. Um, if I look at the um, cloud migration, I click on this, just expand it. It tells me, all right, you have, um, let's say you have some connectivity concerns for IBM on cloud from third-party vendor app. Um, if you click on the actual rule, for example, just click on it. You look at the help section that tells you validate the URL and host. If you click on the detail help, it will give you more information that you can, for example, remember an IP address. This has to be done um, through services. Or if I go down and it talks about databases the same way, uh, if I go down into this one, we'll capture in logs. It tells me, okay, well, you're doing some logging, right? Application logs that are written to the local file system um, on cloud platform are not persisted. So this is kind of the incorrect way of doing it. Again, click on detailed help and it will give you more information on that. Very, very useful tool. Um, Two-Face Commit, this is something that is not supported as part of the Cloud Foundry framework, okay? Um, and so on and so forth. It gives you some Java SEE 7 recommendations since we selected that from a CDI perspective, for example, for my specific application or any Java SE 8 behavioral changes that you may need to look at. Of course, in addition to um, the WebSphere itself, um, anything that has to do from going from WebSphere traditional to Liberty. So as you can see, very useful tool for you to go on and, and use. Now, moving down, the other tool that I would like to show you within the Eclipse plugin also is the configuration toolkit. Um, if I go into the, um, the tool again one more time in Eclipse, there is a migration tool section. If I click on it and I go to configuration migration, and let's say I'm going to click on the WebSphere application server. As you can see in here, it tells me, okay, well, I'm trying to do a migration for WAS. It gives you the command to uh, pick a properties file to generate, and it shows you how to do it. Um, and in here, I have one that's already pre-generated. If I go to my desktop here quickly, um, and I'm going to pick this one. And as you can see, as I open it, now I have the option to say, am I going to Liberty or am I going to a traditional web sphere? And you can select exactly which part of the app server that you're trying to connect from, or you can just um, get that information from an existing server. I want to show you the Liberty one quickly. And if I go next, it gives me the option if I want to select or change the content of the, cha of the configurations because it tells me what they are. And then after that, if I click next, it gives me the server XML file, which is what I need to configure the app server. Very, very, the Liberty server, very, very nice and easy tool to use. If I do the traditional, and just say I'm just going to go with the simple one. If I go next, Again, it gives me the option to make any changes that I want to make changes to. And if I click next, now look how powerful this is. It will give you the actual commands or the, the Jython script that you can actually issue to an application server to make the changes to. Like I said, very powerful tool there that will be very useful for you to use. And the next tool I would like to show you, um, just going through the list of tools here, is the um, binary scanning tool. The tools that I showed so far scan the application, so it requires source code. However, there are some instances where you may not have access to the application, and you can just simply download this, this tool. If you click on the link that I showed you, there's this binary app scanner. And if you look at this particular tool, if you do the minus help on it, you can, you can assess a given um, environment just by having the binary for that particular application, and you can do an evaluation of it. Um, so here I'm just going to run an evaluation for this, um, some couple of old applications that I have. If you look at it since 2011, actually, that's how old they are. It's going to scan it, it's going to come back out, and there's a lot of options available on it uh, if you want to show only a specific item. But this is kind of an interesting one to show initially because you can find out, uh, it gives you it lists all the additions of WebSphere that we have, including Liberty or traditional WebSphere. 
and then it tells you that your application, for example, uses remote EJBs. And oh, by the way, if you based on that, that application can run anywhere, but it cannot run in Liberty Core or on Bluemix because Cloud Foundry doesn't support remote EJBs. Um, kind of gives you an idea if you want to find out if your application that you're running can fit into whatever environment. That works well when we're talking about the right fit environments, as in um, I'm trying to, to run my application in a smaller environment or a cheaper environment, so I want to go run in base or core, um, not necessarily just in ND. This will be very helpful for you to do and, and, and get to. So the, the next thing I want to run through and show you is, okay, so as I've done the evaluation, but the next thing I want to do is I want to do the analysis. I want to do an, the, uh, do an analyze on the same file. Now I have a lot of options. I can say I'm coming from Web Series 7 and my target environment is Liberty or, or TWAS, or I'm going to go to a target cloud being Bluemix and this is what I selected. You can do the minus minus help to actually find out more details on it. But as you can see in here, this is very, very um, um, useful because not only is it going to show you like here, here's the source options, here's the target options. It kind of gives you an idea of what you're having. It tells you what you have in your application. Again, this is all binary search. If you click on it, you can see the actual results. And then you can click on the rule that tells you, oh, by the way, this is what you're using in here. This is kind of a bad, this is behavior change that took place between seven um, and, and where you're at right now with WebSphere. Or if you go down further, there's like log capture information. Since I said I'm looking for um, um, doing things to the cloud. And it says, this is what you're using. I know, by the way, the rule states that you cannot be using this for Cloud Foundry. Again, very useful tool that, that will help you in a tremendous way to be able to assess your binary, your application, to figure out what you need to do with it. Look at this. I mean, at the end of, um, if you look at the end of this section, it shows you all the tools that it actually reads. This gets updated on a regular basis. I hope that you find this very useful and you take advantage of it because it will help you um, um, and improve your time to market and your migration effort in a humongous and tremendous way and help you go to the cloud in a very easy way as well.